Welcome back to the Using Project and Resource Management with Clarity Self-Paced Training Course. We're now starting Module 3, Project Management Features. Here we have four learning objectives. The first, we are going to tour the project management module within Clarity. We'll look from within a project, we'll look at all the different components that are offered in the project object. Second, we will look at the project list portlet, which we get to from the left uh, menu. We'll select project from there, and it'll take us to a listing of all projects, and we'll work with that. And third, we'll look at how we can use templates in Clarity with, to help us with development of uh, project information. And then fourth, we'll touch on briefly monitoring and controlling projects. And then finally, we'll have some hands-on practice exercises. The first thing we want to do is log back into Clarity. I'm going to log back in as myself uh, so that we see the information that's associated with me and we can navigate the system properly. The main thing for, uh, for logging in again is I want to begin at the project overview page, and that is where we left off in the last module. And so we'll try to come back to this from time to time, and we'll see if we can build the information to a richer set of data for us to be able to work with our projects from. Now, I want to select a project that we can go into to use as the demonstration for looking at uh, the various parts of uh, a project. So with that, I'll take this uh, project from my projects list and just click on it any new courseware project, click on that, and that will open the project. Now that opens the project, and here we're going to just do sort of a quick tour, quick flyby of all the parts of the project before we go into any kind of a detail on them individually. So looking at the tabs that are comprised of different parts of this project, uh, the first tab is Properties. That's project properties. And you can see from there, there are some sub-tabs or sub-links that are on the line right below the tabs. In this case, for properties, there's main that we're looking at right now, and then sub-objects, dependencies, baseline, and associated releases. Um, and uh, also on this page, besides the tabs going across, and then right under those, the sub-tabs or sub-links, then over on the left side of the page, going down, we see the uh, sub-pages. And we'll get into these in a little bit. We can work with each of these has more information to display in the page area that we're looking at. So that's a, that is a uh, quick rundown on the tabs, the sub-tabs, and the sub-pages down the left side. Now let's just uh, take a look at what items there are here. Uh, and uh, just looking at it, we see, like I said, the first one is properties. The second one is the team. And when we go into that tab, we'll be working with establishing the project team, both in terms of project roles and project resources. Uh, the next one is ta uh, tasks. Uh, and in tasks, we can build our work breakdown structure and then assign resources, estimates, and actually do the scheduling. And I'll have uh, lots of comments to talk about that um, as we get into it. Uh, but from a high-level standpoint, we're only going to be doing very small work breakdown structures in the task tab. That is, by that I mean by uh, scheduling within Clarity, as opposed to scheduling in the scheduler program which in this case I have set up to work with it in Open Workbench. So I can do more um, complex, sophisticated scheduling in the scheduler program, or I can do very high-level scheduling in the task tab. And that's, in this course, we're going to concentrate on just the task tab for scheduling and that high-level work breakdown structure this next course in this series that's, that is the using Open Workbench with Clarity, that one gets starts with opening it in Workbench, and, and 
there we get into all the elements of um, detailed scheduling. So the fourth tab then is financial plans. If you have purchased the financial management module from CA and have it implemented, and, uh, and to do that, it has to be designed and configured, and, uh, and then each project and the resources are uh, financially enabled. Now, if that's the case, then we're able to do financial plans, and we'll talk more about that. I'm not going to go into chargeback since I have this particular project financially enabled. It's showing chargebacks, but I'm not going to do chargeback. Hierarchy tab. Uh, the hierarchy is a way of being able to do roll-ups of effort and, uh, and uh, financial information when we're in a hierarchical situation such as a um, master sub. Uh, and we can have several layers of master subs and um, a number of layers. I would, I would only caution not to get too complex and too deep. But for some organizations, more often in the new product development, hierarchy becomes a very important uh, factor in, in doing their schedules. The next tab over is risk issues changes. We'll principally be talking about it from a risk and issues standpoint. We'll get into that. Uh, the next one over is collaboration. And uh, the primary area that's most often used in here is the document manager that's built into Clarity. Not all organizations use that. Um, uh, feature because they have their own rich document management systems. Uh, so we're not going to go too much into that in this course. Processes, uh, as I've said before, processes are becoming more and more important within the Clarity application. Much information now is being driven by processes. They're typically set up by administrators and they can do administrative functions they can also act in part of the uh, project and um, uh, governance process. And so there's uh, many benefits that can be derived from processes. And then audit, uh, the next tab is audit. And whether you see that tab or not depends upon whether the Clarity Administrator has turned on auditing. And then what you see in there is also dependent upon which field they have determined they want to audit. And then the final tab is uh, dashboard, and we'll look at that. Uh, there's several choices on dashboards, and of course, um, that's good, rich project information that's summarized into either tabular or graphical information. And there are, uh, we're able to customize the dashboards, and the, the initial layout of the dashboard is actually controlled by this item here that's in the um, uh, main page that says page layout, and it's showing right now that I'm going to use a project storyboard dashboard set that's pre-configured. Then I could then modify that later. We'll look at that. Before I go down to these items on the, in the subpages, I want to just mention there's a scenario line here. And the scenario uh, lets uh, the uh, project manager or other managers that have access do what-if planning which are um, to be able to make changes that are not um, saved, but you can look at the impact and, of uh, different kinds of options, and that's in scenario planning. Then uh, the last thing I wanted to show here is uh, the subpages under properties here. We're looking at the general um, subpage right now, and uh, that has a certain set of information on it like the project name and uh, project ID. Now, the project ID is something that you're able to do with auto numbering, and so it depends on the Clarity administrator. But most often, uh, they'll use an auto numbering scheme that will put a number in here automatically when they create the project. And um, there's good, rich information in here, like, for example, risk indicator, which we'll talk about. Uh, we're able to provide status information, the stage we're in, and several other things. One of the key things to point out here, too, if we were looking at something that were just being used as a template, a project that is a template, this box here would be checked, template. And then we'd be able to, it would show up in the, in the template list, which we'll be looking at in a little bit. One other main major item, really, is this organizational breakdown structure. 